Hey there, welcome back to Farmcraft. We're finally ready to start putting this boom back together again. So far you've seen me tear it apart, which was quite an ordeal. Set it on fire. <laughs> Another ordeal. Fix the fire damage, get it running again. Well, we went through how it all worked. Cleaned everything up, rebuilt the cylinder, inspected the chains, and now we're ready to try to put it back together. And I say we, I mean me. I'm doing all this alone so far. And at this point, I mean, obviously I could get some help, but it's kind of like a personal challenge. Can I do it alone? Because, I don't know, this is pretty daunting. I have some ideas on how I'm going to do it, but I really don't know how this is going to go. So, let's get to work. We'll see what happens. So I went through all my wear pads. They're all within spec, but some have more wear on them than others. The ones that are on the inside, the opposite end of the basket, are inside the boom. Very difficult to replace without ripping this thing apart. So I'm putting my best wear pads on the inside. The others on the outside you can replace any time. So. And then you add shims so that it fits right inside the boom that it's going in. This measures 8 inches. The boom that it's going to be going into measures eight and a sixteenth. The specs are you want it within eighth of an inch. Sixteenth is what I'm shooting for, so. so that's good. Now, I dry fitted this. I'm gonna put Loctite on these bolts, but I wanted to get the dimensions right before I did it. So the red good stuff, it would be really silly to have this come apart after putting this whole thing back together. That end of the fly boom slides into here. So let me show you something here. I've got a tape that shows both inches and centimeters. Almost eight and an eighth, 205 millimeters. Okay, let's go over here. It's just over eight and about 203 or four millimeters. I had to take about three sixteenths of shim out of that. That was that tight. I don't even really get it. I mean, the booms don't look bent, but I guess this was able to flex in the other boom was able to flex out and the plastic was able to crush down enough for that interference. And the only way I can see that they put it together and got that is they put the boom in and then they pounded shims in to tighten it up. I don't know what they were thinking. That's not how it's supposed to be. But I bet you that's why this, this boom wouldn't telescope all the way. It was jamming there and getting really tight. These top wear pads were shimmed perfectly. I didn't have to change anything on them. So it turns out I had the exact same problem on the mid-boom. It was shimmed too wide, but the top was fine. I'm thinking they measured wrong. They might have measured to the outside dimension. All right, I'm doing the top wear pads. This is the mid-boom, but in order to measure the clearance, I have to install the, the sheave or shiv. I'm probably saying that word wrong, but I have to install the pulley that's down here because you have to measure off of the bottom of that. So let's get that on there. This is the pulley that had the worn pin as well as the worn bushings that need to be replaced. Two new bushings, the old sheave. I think we can press these in with the arbor press. And the other one was just a little bit below that surface. I like that. Nice. All right, now they want anti-seize on the ends, but not in the middle. So the way I'm gonna accomplish that is I'm gonna put anti-seize inside this one and just on the end of the pin for the other side. Now if I slide in from this side. <laughs> what an idiot. All right, let's try this again. The set screws got blue Loctite. Let's get some grease on that sucker. So this is where I need to measure from. 15 and 15 sixteenths. And I know you metric guys love that. 
So these are the shims that were there. And I think they're right. I think they're gonna be really close. The inside dimension of the base boom is 17 and a 16th. So I want 17 inches is basically what I'm shooting for. Right on 17. Yeah, that, that makes me feel better. That makes me uh, more confident that they just measured wrong when they did the side shims. And it's no wonder this boom wasn't, wasn't working right. It was very jerky, wouldn't extend all the way. I think this thing's gonna work a lot better. It's touching on the other side. I've got a sixteenth of an inch there. Bullseye. Same with the top, less than an eighth. So I can go ahead and push that sucker in there. Now it's time to start putting the chains back on. Here I'm spreading out the extend chains on top of the mid boom. This is the attachment of the extend chains to the chain attach block. This block is the only attachment to the fly boom. I admit it's a little disconcerting that it's only one pin. But that pin is huge compared to all the pins that are in the chain. It's held in place with a cotter pin, but even if that cotter pin somehow failed, there isn't room for the pin to back out. A very safe system. That's what I like to see. Now the retract chains go there, and then the block goes back under there and gets bolted. So in my research, I got two different answers on what to do about the pins. One recommended that you replace all of them, these pins. They're in the chain attach block and they're in the chain adjusters. Another one said to inspect them if they look good, which all mine look good, then, uh, then just reuse them. And <clears throat> initially I was just gonna replace them because you know, it's just a pin. These things are really expensive. They're like, well, there's different ones, but they're like 50 to $80 each. And there's several of them. I was like, what is the point? I mean, this thing looks perfect. And what really made the, decision for me is realizing that every link of this chain has a pin and they're not being replaced so why do i need to replace this one i don't know i decided and you know some of my sources said yeah just uh, reuse them if they look good and they look good 
for that price, they must be getting like some real high quality control or something. It just doesn't make sense that they would cost that much. with the lighting it's going to be challenging to see anything. I'm going to be putting this chain attached block on those four holes that is the fly boom right there and in this orientation so those are the extend chains these are the retract chains so that's all I'm doing in there is just putting those four bolts in. So I put that on backwards it needs to be the other way Darn it. Okay. These bolts get the red Loctite. All right, got those done. Now we can lay the retract chains on top of the mid boom. Now we're done over here at the shop, it's time to go up to the lift. All right, I've been giving this a lot of thought. How do I get that back in there? And there's a lot of different ideas, and I'm gonna try the simplest one first, but I wanna make sure I do it safely, safely enough. So, you know, the tractor can pick this up. So why don't I just take the tractor right here, pick it up to the right height, get that close, hook or come along to that end, and pull it in. With a crowbar, I ought to be able to manipulate it and get it where it needs to go. My only concern with that is the top heaviness of this basket. If I was up there working and the thing decided to roll over, I don't know, I'm coming along in it and it jumps, who knows what. That would be bad. I don't think that would turn out good for me. I'd probably be okay as long as the tractor... Anyway, so how about I do that with the addition of the excavator holding that end of the basket up just it doesn't actually even have to hold it it just has to be there so if the thing started to roll it would get caught so that's what i think i'm going to try first i've got a rope attached here right in the midline it's important when you're come alonging so it doesn't bind and then i've already got my come along laid out here and then I'm going to attach it right up there. There's another eye that I put a, a strap through. And I will be dead center with the come along pulling. And then I've got a crowbar that I will use to manipulate the mid boom up, down, left, right, whatever it needs to get in there. And the excavator is going to be hooked to this. Just to, uh, just to make sure that this thing doesn't try to roll on me. I don't think it will, obviously, or I wouldn't do this. But I'm um, uh, just going to make sure. Now, I thought about using the dump truck just like I did. And yeah, I could put the dump truck there. I could kind of set this on it. And I could kind of manipulate that to get it at the right height. But I don't feel like that's really helping me. That was nice to be able to catch it when it's coming out. But putting it back in is a different thing. So let's give this a go. So one thing I have to do, the extend, no, the retract chains need to be hanging as this thing is going in. So I'm gonna put them in these buckets to keep them clean, hopefully. All 
All right, got the chains sorted. Those are gonna hang and they'll get pulled over this sheave. The extend chains I've got running right down the middle all the way into the basket, no chance of them getting tangled or anything because once I get the mid boom all the way in, I'm gonna need to pull these chains out and put them on the base boom to get ready for putting the cylinder in. A lot of chain management. Now what I'm seeing here, for whatever reason, the tractor's got it at an angle, but the nice thing is I can adjust the pitch of that very easily. So I'm just gonna match it. Uh, I think this might actually work. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. I'm surprised how much force it takes to make that slide. I wish I was closer to start with. <laughs> yeah this is sketchy but i don't know look at that if i can just get it a foot so that that is on there i'm good then i can just start pulling it in and not have to worry about you know craziness Here I'm using a crowbar on the other side to push it into position. happy to have that in the main boom because I was getting too much weight on this side. Oh, I love it. See, that was that was what I needed. Now the sheave is totally in there and the base boom can support the weight. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. This is awesome. I only need to pull it into right here and then it has the proper overlap, then I can actually take the tractor out, the base boom will support it, and then I can take the tractor around to the basket side and push it in just like I pulled it out. So uh, all I gotta do is come along at like four feet, five feet. Gotcha. Sorry about that. So now's a real good time for me to put those wear pads back in. So I had my doubts if I was going to be able to do this without help, but uh, I really wanted to try just to see if I could. Uh, obviously it would have been easier with two people, but um, that was fun. <laughs> And yes, I have a bad habit of celebrating before I'm quite done. I probably ought to get finished before I say that. <laughs> the wear pads are in. 
that gives room for that chain when I remove the tractor. And that's gonna get pulled all the way up in there and then it will fall out of this hole. I'll show you. Yeah, as I'm pushing the boom in, that chain will continue to get pulled in. I'm gonna watch for it to disappear and then I know I've got just about three feet before it's gonna come falling through this hole. And that's when I wanna stop because I need to attach that adjuster mechanism here. It goes, that's what it's pulling on. Would you look at that? It's back in. All right, so the boom just went in and I am happy what I'm seeing here because I had my doubts. If you look there, I have about a 16th of an inch of play. I'm touching on this side. So that is shimmed correctly in spite of the fact that I took, see this one I took a quarter inch out and the other one I took uh, about three sixteenths out. I, you know, it's one of these things, I've never done this before, so there's a lot of doubt, like, am I right here? Is this really, you gotta think the guy who did it before has done it many times, so he knows more than I do, but eh, apparently not, at least not on that day. I wonder if he measured to the outside and shimmed to that. So there's no chance that I'm gonna be able to uh, get this cylinder in today. I actually have some company that's about to get here. So I'm gonna pull this chain through enough that the far end is out of the weather and then the near end I'm gonna cover with plastic and um, we're supposed to get snow tomorrow. So I just wanna get this thing kind of buttoned up as much as I can. Yeah, we'll get back to it later. But man, look at that, there's a basket on this thing. All right, back to work. We're cleaning things up in preparation for putting the cylinder back in. All right, we are out here on the boom. And this is where we're gonna do the retract adjuster. Putting plenty of anti-seize on these threads. And the rest of it's getting fluid film. Those chains will get pulled back in once we get everything situated and tensioned. Did y'all notice I forgot this washer? Could have said something. That's not coming out. Or, better said, that's not going anywhere.
I was able to push all the shims in by hand. So, you know, there's nothing jamming it like it was before. And the top shims also have about a 16th of clearance. All right, let's get ready to put this cylinder in. Now I need to finish pulling the extend chains onto the top of the base boom. Okay, we're ready to put the cylinder in. So that's the status of the chains. This chain here is just the extend chain and it's just going to the chain attach block. The cylinder wheel is going to go in here and as it's pushing in, it's going to be pulling the chain in from the top. So all that chain will end up getting pulled into the boom. So the cylinder actually ended up being more challenging than the booms. I was thinking I could just pick it up to the right height and pull it in with a come along like I did the booms. And here I'm attaching some webbing so that I can put a rope and then extend to my come along. And now I'm going to roll it more vertical and then slide it back against the forks. Usually metal on metal will slide pretty easily, but I was having trouble getting this to slide. So of course I escalated things, getting up on the forks and almost fell off. <laughs> There I got it some, but it turns out it just wasn't enough. How do I twist that thing? It'd be nice if it would lay flat, but it does not want to do that. I tried with a crowbar for a little while. So it's hard for me to film this, so I'm going to show you this way. This wheel here needs to fit inside the fly boom here, and it has spacers on the side. There's another one on the other side, and the two together make just the right width to fit in between there. So once I get those spacers vertically aligned in there, it won't be able to twist anymore. So that's what I'm trying to do with the crowbar. All right, this isn't working. And finally, I got an idea that might actually work. So here's the problem. The cylinder has this rod support bracket and it runs on these two long bars that run inside these tubes and they're at diagonals from each other and the way they're attached to the cylinder it makes it so that it won't sit vertically. You can see here the cylinder is sitting on the bottom of the cylinder obviously and then one of these tubes is keeping it cocked at an angle and I need it to go in dead vertical. What I realize if I put a chain on the rod support bracket itself and lift up on that with the excavator, it's going to force it into a vertical position.
cylinder would just lay flat. There it is. Although it might twist again, that would suck. This is surprisingly turning out to be harder than the booms were. But it just went in. That's what we needed. And at this point, it's just a matter of pulling it in. Why is it twisting? Stop that twisting. Might have spoke too soon. Yeah, I'm going to change my plan again. It's on the sheave good now and it's in. With the excavator, I can have it hanging on that bracket over there and keep it vertical and then just push it in with the excavator. I wanted to do the come along, but I'll just take it slow and steady and watch the chains. I think that's the best option. In there I still have to line up the pens but uh, I still have a $50,000 cylinder and that's why I didn't power wash the outside of the boom yet I knew that was gonna be a mess we'll get that later and the rest of it too all right probably can't see on camera but looking up in there that chain looks like it's in perfect position so three things I need to do and I'm not sure which order to do them in Obviously, I'm going to need to line up the cylinder with this and put the pin through that. I need to put the half pins, you can actually see right there on the mid boom, which needs to come back towards me. It needs to go there and the cylinder actually needs to go that way a little further. Um, this area right, right there is where that half pin is. So cylinder needs to go that way, mid boom back, put the half pins in. Then I got to do the extend chain clevis, which really might be easiest to do now. I think I'm going to do that first. I'm going to at least put it on. I don't have to put this plate on, but I can get the clevis all built. If I push the cylinder further in, those chains are going to go further in and it's going to be harder for me to do. So yeah, let's do that first. It's safe to say I should have done this before the chain got sucked in that far. Ah, oh, wasn't holding my mouth right. All 
All right, well, that was a big pain. I really should have put that on before the chain got pulled in that far, but that's done. So now I'm gonna try to get the mid boom and the half pins in. So let's see if I can use a crowbar and move that mid boom back. The cylinder is right there and there's the mid boom. So the mid boom needs to come back a couple inches, cylinder needs to go forward a couple inches. And I'm hoping a crowbar, crowbar will do that. Come here. So lining this up was one of the few things that went way easier than I was expecting. I'll take it. Well, that's interesting. The cylinder needs to go up a little bit. I guess that makes sense. It's sitting on the rod support now. Yeah, like you can see there, that cylinder's sticking down a little bit. So I'm just going to take the crowbar and pry it up as I'm pushing the half pin in. Here I'm getting the crowbar set to pry up on the cylinder. Got one. There's a little lip right there, and it needs to go up and forward just a tiny bit. finish up this chain attach block or this chain adjuster so fluid film and then anti-seize on the threads so now it's a matter of getting the cylinder the rest of the way in putting the nemesis pin through and the eccentric bushing there and then we are really on the home stretch. How about that? The cylinder needs to go in more, obviously. And uh, I'd happily use the hydraulics, but it needs to go in even more just to hook these up. So I'm gonna give this a little push. <clears throat> yeah, just kidding. We've been through this before. I am going to take the caps off and the plugs and hook the lines back up. See you back in a minute. Lines are installed. Now, hopefully I can retract the cylinder and get it to line up there. Actually, I just realized I might be able to do it just with a crowbar. This got it close, but not quite enough. So I tried retracting it under aux power and it wouldn't move. And engine power, the same result. It's already fully retracted. All right, here's the deal. I need to get the eye of the cylinder to go forward. Remember, the cylinder is directly connected to the mid boom at those half pins that we put in already. So all I have to do is come out here and pull on the mid boom and the entire cylinder assembly is gonna go forward. Then I can pry bar it back a little bit if I need to. That's the plan, we'll see if it works. Cold and windy out here today. I've got a, a lapel mic I've been using um, to try to help with the wind noise for you guys. So I can tell you my audio today would be horrible, but I think this thing's pretty nice. So we'll see how it does.
Just moved a little bit. Was it enough? Oh yeah. Easy peasy. I'm really impressed with this new microphone. They're not a sponsor, but I will put a link to it in my Amazon store and in the description. And I'm gonna play you a before and after clip here. Hear the difference. This would be some form of audio. Okay, so the comment looks like that. All right, this would be some horrible audio. Okay, so now I need to come, it looks like about three quarters of an inch back. And I'm hoping I can do it with a pry bar. Yeah. Amazing what you can do with a lever. I think you can see the little lip on the bottom just needs to come down a tiny bit. Oh yeah, that's gonna go. So we're gonna put some, uh, <laughs> not some. We're gonna goop this thing up with so much anti-seize. Hopefully, I won't have this issue again. All right, now for this eccentric bushing. See if it'll go in, I doubt it. I'm probably gonna have to do some prying. Yeah, it looks like it needs to go up and even though it's eccentric, it won't. Yeah, it's not gonna line up. But I can see where the Allen, where the set screw was before. So that's the position it was in. So if I pry up, I ought to be able to get that in there. Now I'm not putting anti-seize on the outside of this. I would rather this had not come out, that just the pin had come out, like the other side. So uh, uh, I'm gonna put the outside in dry, get that set screw back in there. If I can't get a good mechanical connection that way, I can drill another set screw. But let's see if I can get this. Gotta get it in first. Hmm, look at that. What in the world? Did I put it in backwards? How did I do that? Idiot. Idiot! I sure did. Look at that. Wow, that's gonna work. Okay. Put a little red Loctite on that set screw. Ah, the Nemesis pin. Oh yeah, and I'm sure some people are wondering, you know, why don't you drill in some grease zerks right there? Well, I just don't want to modify this machine. It would probably be fine, yes, but I only have like half inch right there. And you know, I could come in from the top too, I guess. But then I'm going through the eccentric bushing. I'm introducing a lot of potential weaknesses to this system that I don't want. I'd rather just not have to worry about that. Other people have said, why don't you uh, cut some ports in the boom so that you can easily lube the chain? Well, same reason. I'm not cutting anything into this boom because my life depends on the structural integrity of this boom and cutting holes into it compromises that integrity. So 
yeah, I, I think if, um, if that was an option, JLG would have done that. And I like the safety factor. I'm gonna maintain the safety factor just the way it is. I put the telescope limit switch back together. And the mid-boom pin cover plates back on. Remember when I was rebuilding the cylinder, I lost five gallons of oil out of it, and I need to put that five gallons back. All right, let's see how the oil looks now. Might be a little over full. Oh my, still under. I gotta add even more. All right. For now, that's fine. I'm gonna leave it there and see where it levels out after I've been able to fully telescope and retract and all that kind of stuff. It still actually might drop a little bit. All right, we are ready to start hooking this back up. So I need to bring that down, unstrap the control box and the hoses and everything from the boom so that I can reconnect it where it belongs. Man, it is windy today. It'd be a very pleasant day if it wasn't for the wind. It's not that it's cold. I just getting buffeted by the wind all day just sort of starts to wear you out after a while. Maybe I'm just a wimp. Ah, so I got a little bit of rust on this support bracket here. So fluid film. So my question is, is this thing going to dump oil all over me or is it going to be nice? <laughs> the wind makes leaking hydraulic oil fun. Okay, there they are hooked up. Wasn't actually too bad. It didn't drip too much oil on me, just a little bit. Kind of tedious and time consuming, but I did get them in there. Probably can't see that. They're in there. See, that's a bolt. It's tight. These things rusted horribly, so I'm gonna fluid film them. Alright, we are at the extend chain tensioner and I've already got it fairly snug so we're ready to start looking at torquing that. Let's go to the retract chain, we'll do the same. Then I'm going to come up here, I'm going to torque that to 50 foot-pounds. I'll torque the retract to 50 foot-pounds, we'll move the boom back and forth, torque it again, and then put the jam nuts on. good yeah it didn't move much at all so 50 foot pounds puts a lot of tension on that here's our tensioner and there are some very tight chains 50 foot pounds comes out to like 6,000 pounds of linear tension all right jam nut this is actually a lock nut but I'm gonna tighten it 100 foot-pounds against that other nut because we don't want this thing backing off. Uh, 
All right, 100 foot-pounds plus a little bit. That's not going anywhere. By golly, I think we're ready to close her up. I'm getting excited. I'm dying to see if this thing will fully extend and fully retract at a horizontal position without problem. I think it will, but oh man, it would be so disappointing if it didn't. <laughs> oh well, we're going to find out together in just a minute here. I extended the axles so that we could do this. cylinder is going to extend all the way and then when it gets to the spacer remember that was in there that's going to hit that's what's going to stop the cylinder from going any further right there and that's let me make sure i think that's all the way out yeah that's all the way out all right now what it's never done is go back in so let's see if it does Oh, that is so disappointing. I'm really kind of stunned. Like, why would it not? I was sure it being shimmed too tight was the problem. See, if I just set the end on the ground, I think it'll go in. So I didn't hit the end there, but I'm pretty much all the way out. Let's see if it'll go in now. Nope. Let's see if that'll go in. Man, that's disappointing. I guess I could lubricate it, but I really shouldn't have to. Yeah, it just doesn't like the last couple of feet. That's all right, I can live with that. The real reason I went in there was to get that cylinder. It is working way better than it did before. And um, the telescope is much smoother. And obviously the telescope cylinder is not leaking oil anymore. So we do have success, but I want perfect, darn it. So I talked to Dean about this and this might actually be an easy fix, believe it or not. The pressure relief valve going to the telescope function might be too low. In other words, the lift is not sending enough pressure to that cylinder to do what it should do. It might be as simple as just adjusting the pressure and that would fix it. But that's going to be a repair for another day. The important thing is I have my lift back and I can finally take down that Christmas tree that I put up a couple months ago because, uh, well, the ground is either too soft or I've had my lift torn apart, haven't, haven't been able to do it. So we'll do that soon. So there you go, guys. That was the most intimidating job I ever attempted, and it turned out to be one of the biggest jobs I've ever done. Didn't take as long as something like the porch, but the porch is just more meticulous, you know, stick your head down and do all the work, push through the hours. This was a lot of thought, a lot of agonizing, how am I gonna do this, how am I gonna do that, is this gonna work, try something else. It was quite a challenge. Now, I am super happy that I did it. I like a challenge and it feels really good to finish something like that. I've learned a lot about my machine. I'm much more confident in it now. The hydraulic cylinder doesn't leak oil anymore. And, um, you know, I can be up there and be confident that uh, that chain's not going anywhere. That thing is not gonna break. I, I can feel very safe uh, 80 feet up in this thing now. Really happy about that because I have a job I need to do with it pretty soon. You'll see that coming up on the channel. I wanna give a huge thank you to the three guys that helped me out here, especially Dean. I've had, I think it's three phone calls with Dean now, and he's been very gracious to uh, answer my many questions. Um, also, Donnie and Rob, thank you guys very much. I'm gonna give all three of you some swag from my Farmcraft merch store. Just take a look and let me know what you want, and I will get it headed your way. That's it for the lift right now, guys. I think until something breaks, I don't have anything else to fix on this thing. 
And uh, yeah, I am super excited. I have the lift that I want. It's dependable, it's safe, it runs, it's not stalling, everything works, all the functions work. How cool, I am, I am really thrilled with that. And uh, you know, several people have commented that like maybe I was regretting it because I had to do so much work on it. No, when you buy a machine like this, that new costs, I don't, what do these things cost new? 150 grand for $8,000, you expect to do a lot of work on it. Um, you know, at this point as it sits, what is this thing worth? I don't know. Tell you what, I'm not planning on selling it, but if I would, I would think 25 or 30 grand, you know, with all the documentation of all the repairs I've done and how everything works. I don't know, what do you guys think? Comment below. What is this thing worth now that I've gone through just about everything there is to go through on it? Enough talking, I got nothing more to say. I'm gonna go take a nap. <laughs> Thanks for watching, we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>